Hello traders, welcome to another daily analysis for February 21st, Tuesday. Uh, right now it's 1.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time at February 22nd, so we are about an hour and a half uh, prior to the London opening. So what happened today? Uh, today was another light economic calendar day, and as I mentioned, you know, this week really, we don't really have much tier one data to drive the market. And interesting thing is, I don't know if you realize, it's always like this, you have a week of very excited events, and then you have a week of very quiet um, data. So I think that's something, you know, very interesting as a, a currency trader, that's pretty much the pattern uh, for the fundamental data. And a lot of time you, uh, if you ask me what kind of criteria it should have as a trader, I think it just be able to uh, reserve your energy, but also be able to use it when you need to, because you just, it's, it's not like a regular job where you have a quite balanced expenditure uh, about your day, right? Sometimes you have a day or even a week, there's no trade, there's nothing happening. And that's really the time um, a lot of people will get lazy and, and just, and then that, that's when actually a trade will show up, you know, out of the blue and you will miss it. So uh, be there consistent, consistently, it's very, very, uh, very important for trading. So we start the London session today, you know, we have a consecutive of manufacturing service PMI from Germany, France, and Eurozone. And they were all largely in line with expectation or better. Um, but uh, as mentioned, this fundamental data right now really had no effect for Euro. As you probably already aware that Euro has been largely sold off, you know, since weeks ago. And the reason is because the central banks again has a much important role in terms of the fundamental aspect. And, you know, pretty much the uh, ACB had been very firm in their QE program. And really, we are not expecting to see the end of it by 2017. Uh, they will tighten up, uh, they were taper, t tapering the uh, bond buying uh, in April, but really not going to be too much effect for the low rate environment. And on top of that, the biggest reason is because of the recent negative sentiment from the elections. As I mentioned, that's really the main play, uh, main catalyst for Euro in 2017 is this geopolitical events. Now in March, we're gonna have a Dutch election. April and May, it's a French, ele French election and September will be a German election. So that will be a main catalyst. And really things of course are not looking well. And the reason is because you know, people are afraid another French exit, same as Brit exit. And uh, it's already affected. Now, uh, we don't know whether a certain event have a certain effect. So sometimes you have to see how the market react to that event. And right now, a very clear sign is that the French bond. So a lot of people are start dumping the French bond. And you can already see that the yield has gone up uh, a lot. So that's going to be a, a real change. So reaction. And uh, back then, a lot of French bond was held by a Japanese investor as well. So basically, if the bond investor, which is also the smart investor, basically, if they don't, th if they think the risk is too high, and when they start selling it, that that will create a lot of effect in the spot market. So that's pretty much what happened for Euro dollar right now. And uh, we also have the UK inflation report hearing today and comments from Bank of England member. Really nothing new in terms of this this report and the comment and press conference. The only thing is that, that Bank of England is still in this neutral position. And right now they are they have you know they have possibility to either raise the interest rate or cut interest rate. It's really depend on the future data. Different scenario if the data continue, if the economy continue to be well supported while the inflation keeps picking up from the wages, then they will have to raise the interest rate. And they also mentioned that they, they do have a certain limitation for tolerance for the high inflation. So, but we just don't know what that number is. 
so it's not really necessary two percent maybe it's three and three point five percent so it really depends on how bank of england uh, can stomach that kind of high inflation on the other hand if the retail sales continue to be disappointed if the gdp have been contracted th things like that then they will cut interest rate further now don't forget the last time they did cut the interest rate not the nearest meeting but right after the break exit they wait for one meeting and a second meeting after the break exit we did see uh, bank of england cutting interest rate in 2016. so really me personally have no agenda or bias toward each either direction for me for british pound right now really i don't know which direction this is going to go uh, but of course if you pair up with a stronger currency like a cable then you can definitely short but it's not because you know pump is going to be weak or strong it's just because you're very favorable in terms of us dollar so that will be the only case when i'm shorting or buying british pound but in terms of the currency itself i don't really have any bias toward it and i don't really know where it's gonna go it really depends on the data in the future uh, moving to the New York station, there was a GDT price from New Zealand, which was uh, a negative number, but the forecast was also a negative number, so it was, didn't really create too much surprise. And then we ended the NY station with RBA lowest spokes. Now the government, uh, Australia basically right now, it's a sort of paradox. The reason is because they their economy has recovered well, and they were hoping the next GDP release, which is next week, is going to be a positive number. Uh, however, they still have this huge issue with uh, debt and housing crisis. So this is something you really have to take into consideration that if they have to address that housing issue, and if the debt level is already high enough, then really most likely Bank of uh, Reserve Bank of Australia is not gonna be able to cut the interest rate further, and I think that's what happened now. Because from the the uh, Lois uh, comment today, that's what he said as well. That they do want to see economy grow faster, but they have limited tool to use, and the reason is because they do have these uh, debt issues and housing issues. So that's why they are not so unless unless the economy is really in the deep trouble uh, and, and and that's what people a lot of uh, traders were expecting since they the previous two gdp is a uh, contracted so they are in a technical recession already so people were expecting rba uh, in 2017 to cut interest rate or at least to give a very dovish talk that's why when that did not happen in a couple of weeks ago we saw a large buying into Australian dollar. And now today, basically, it just it, it explained why uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia cannot really cut interest rate. And I think this is a very important thing to take into consideration that definitely it's very, very logic and very uh, possible as a, as a barrier for them to cut interest rate further. If that's the case, then unless you see a lot of future data that is really really uh point in a very negative territory otherwise even you have you know occasionally you have a soft employment maybe the terrible retail sale things like that that does not necessarily mean rba will cut interest rate sometimes the market will you know get over itself too fast but now i just reading this comment today i feel like this is very a very strong point for buyers for Australian dollar. Yes, you will have a large pullback, most likely, be, but that's because Australian dollar has been overbought all, all, uh, since 2017. But for RBA to cut, it's just really highly unlikely. But we have to see what happened to the GDP. But if all the data in the future is within the range, then most likely they will just keep a wait and see policy movement so that's pretty much what happened today and uh, you know for each currency for euro we still think it's a very negative currency due to the uh, political catalyst continues 
uh, French election continues. So these things are all going to pressure euro to the downside. Uh, US dollar today, the data, we do have two data which were quite soft, but uh, we don't, we don't, re we didn't really have any negative sentiment from Donald Trump. And once you remove that out of the equation, the US dollar will revert back to the fundamentals, which is very, very strong. Now, a lot of people like to look at data as individually, you know, like this data today is not good, that that one is good, but that's really not the way to look at the fundamental picture. If you look at the fundamental picture, at least, you know, you got to take into a cautery consideration. So you don't want to just because there's one negative NFP, so you start setting US dollar. You could do that in an intraday perspective. But when you're looking at data, you want to look at at least a series of data to understand where the country is at. So for US dollar, as we kept mentioned all, uh, you know, since 2016 all the way until this year, is that among all the major currencies, this is the only currency that has any possibility for any possibility for a rate hike. So. Uh, that's something very, very important to to uh, to realize it. It's because uh, back then, you know, although New Zealand dollar and Australian dollar all have a high, always a high yield currency, they all are performing quite well. But the truth is that no other currency, at least for now, has this possibility for a rate hike. Yes, British pound does have that possibility, but it's not going it's it's not going to happen and even if it happens it's it's not going to happen that fast as US dollar but and even if it's happened it does not come from a strong economic reason if british pound has to be hiked it's mainly because the currency has been depreciated largely so that's more like a plan b it's not a, a, a good economic picture like US dollar so if you're looking at this kind of fundamental perspective US dollar has been and has been a very strong currency, fundamentally speaking. So once you remove the negative sentiment, which you know since 2017 has been from one person only, and that is Donald Trump himself. So once you remove that, then US dollar is a very attractive currency to buy. Uh, doesn't mean it's gonna be a one way straight up. Of course, you will have an up down ups and down movement. That's just the nature of currency market uh, British pound already mentioned you know it's a sort of a neutral currency for me and right now it really depends on the data and I don't really have any bias toward it it can go either way Canadian dollar on the other hand is a very strong currency for me now we have OPEC secretary today commented again about the compliance uh, I think the OPEC member and the secretary himself were quite surprised. I think I think this time everyone were quite surprised to see how much cooperation they actually were able to achieve. And it's still well supported for the oil market because a lot of hedge funds start getting into the start getting into the positions right now. So on the contrary, a lot of people think hedge fund move money, you know, faster. But for them to move that large amount of money, they either price in or they gonna wait for a more concrete evidence so since they are not able to move in and out like a retail sale a retail trader so that's why uh, they start getting into uh, oil start building up the futures position maybe only at this month and that's why i keep saying that they do want to see a sort of evidence for january and now since they have that so people are all expecting oil price to at least reach $60 per barrel and coming from the secretary himself is that they think uh, the supply cut will continue and the demand will resume and oil price is still far below the target price of OPEC. Now just to note that there is really no official target price for the oil market. Right? People just say they think it's gonna go higher but we don't really know how high it's gonna go. $60 per barrel that's just a, a speculation from the market. We don't know how high it's going to go. Well, we don't know what agenda they have, but at least for now, we think it is going to go up. 
Uh, Australian dollar already mentioned, I think right now, once you remove the interest rate cut possibility out, then uh, they really depend on the commodity price and the Chinese economy. Now, once those things continues, then and also the high yield continues, you will, it is still a very attractive currency. Uh, the only thing is that it has been sort of overbought since 2017, right? It's only been two months, but it had gone up, I think, 67% already. So that's why you should see some pullback. And the fact is that we stopped seeing the, the uh, basically, if you look at daily chart, you stop seeing this uh, uh, up movement, like especially comparing with uh, Aussie dollar. So we do think it's gonna pull back a little bit, but in a in a in a broader perspective, it is still going up. And uh, New Zealand dollar is in the same place. Uh, also today, you have a negative GDP price, but you know by and large, we do have a very positive GDP price, very good employment, very good inflation. Maybe not employment. Employment is a little bit soft, but regardless, it is looking well and uh, it is very well supported. And on top of that, New Zealand dollar still remains to be the highest yield currency among the major eight. For Japanese yen and Swiss franc, again, negative currency due to the fundamental uh, weakness. And uh, BOE Kuroda, Kuroda today is saying that the Bank of, Bank of sorry, BOJ Kuroda today is saying that Bank of Japan ready to ease further if needed to reach the 2% inflation target. So I think Bank of Japan is very clear about their agenda. They, they are not going to stop the QE until they reach that 2% inflation target, which is still way below, and they are still not, not close to it at all. So that's why they are still going to basically artificially depreciate their currency. And now I think after the meeting between Abe and Trudeau, uh, sorry, Abe and Trump, they do have a sort of green light from the White House administration. So I think they might get a sort of a pass uh, due to the, uh, again, it's like a deal. So I do think U.S. will need Japan for their Asian Pacific uh, uh, locations and the partnerships. So in exchange, you know, Japan will re maybe invest more in uh, U.S. soil, maybe, uh, you know, do more about the auto industry to help build the U.S. auto industry, uh, auto industry, things like that. But nevertheless, they do they did seems like to get get a green light from the White House administration ever since the meeting. So we don't really we haven't seen any currency talk anymore from Trump. And even if we had it, it will be really mainly towards China. So uh, that's why we think uh, Japan now has a more room to continue the QE and that's why Japanese yen will still remain to be weak currency. Now same thing applied to Swiss franc. There's no any sign that that they, they are going to you know stop the QE things like that. Of course these two currency are uh, always going to react to the sentiment and you're always gonna have a days that they are hugely bold off. And that's just the nature of it. So those are not able to be predicted basically. So those are not my factor of entering a trade. I'm only doing a fundamental. So if I'm doing an intraday trade, yes, I will maybe perhaps look at a stock market, look at a bond yield, decide what I'm going to do for the session. But for a swing trade perspective, I pretty much just ignore all the sentimental noises for the very simple reason that they are not predictable. So you might as well just not pay too much attention to that. Okay, so let's take a look at our recent uh, uh, current trade. Uh, first thing first, look at our daily trade. So let's go to our daily chart. So Pang Aussie is the only trade that I adjust a little bit. Right now, I move my stop loss to break even already. And the reason is because I also I'm very still very bullish about Australian dollar, but I'm not that bearish toward British pound. So the difference is, is that if you pair a currency uh, up and then if that pair has a strong fundamental bias, then then you could, of course, hold it even longer. But for me, it's not because Australian dollar 
lose the strength or because the British bond gains strength. No, it's just this particular pair. I don't have that much confidence in terms of the fundamental bias because I think Australian dollar so far still haven't been able to provide us with some good fundamental data. I do hope the next February, uh, February 28 next week we can see a sort of the GDP data to be positive. If that's the case, then that will be great for Aussie loan. Uh, but on the other hand, I still don't have a clear uh, negative reason for British pound. Now back then I say that the retail sale had put British pound into a negative territory, and that is true. But uh, today from this inflation report and coming from Bank of England, I do think that it's really, it is negative again if you pair it up with US dollar. And that for me, if, if cable you want me to short, I will be much confident to hold it. Be that's because the US dollar has a much stronger uh, fundamental bias. But for British pound itself, I am really uh, most most likely maintain a neutral position to it just just because we we just we need more data to see where it's gonna go basically so that's why i moved to break even for now just to be safe uh the other trade with dollar yen trade you know as you can tell we are really continue to going a little bit age a little bit higher but really in a sideway movement i'm still holding this dollar trade same as dollar swiss due to the fundamental strength. Now, Swiss franc, dollar Swiss looks way much better than dollar yen. And uh, again, we are buying at a very low place. So it's still a lot of room to go, same as dollar yen. And that's why we keep holding it because fundamentally, everything is looking very well. K yen is same thing. We are holding it because the fundamental bias and it does look like it's really gonna go up or down or maybe sideways movement but eventually we do think the trend is at least going to taste 80 or 8850 again um, our euro Aussie short continue to go down so we do have this green candle last week which uh, uh, a lot of members were scared and were asking me you know should should we get out uh, or things like that but for me, you know, if the fundamental bias continues, really there's no, when you, again, it, how you get into a trade and how you get out of a trade, it's, it's not, it's not, it's very important, but it's more, more important is, is you want to get in and out with the same uh, analysis. So how you get in, it's very in the, it's very subjective. You can get in because the fundamental reason. You can get in because technical reason. That's all fine. For me, it's it's all very very uh, valid. But you you want to have the same approach. So if you are getting a trade because of certain signal or because of certain fundamental reason, then you want to get out because that reason or that signal has changed. Now the worst thing again for, for a trader is to have different approach. Maybe you get in because something happened in the news, but then you get out because you know uh, the technical chart has changed. That, that means you are not persistent. Or vice versa, if you get in because the technical trigger, then you want to get out because that technical trigger has changed. You don't want to get out just because the news suddenly become very terrible. I think that's really a key for a trader is just to be persistent and congruent with your approach. This is more important than what you use, really. How you trade is more important than what you trade with. So Euro Aussie, again, we're looking to go downside. And Aussie Swiss, looking again, continue to age higher, which is very nice. Aussie Yen, on the other hand, also going to go higher. It's not as, as well as, as Aussie Swiss because the strength of Japanese Yen. But because the fundamental bias is very strong, so we continue to hold it for now. Uh, today, I do have a few, two trades that I, I, I'm i very interested to do. But let me take a look at uh, 28 pairs. So Euro Pound, uh, yesterday we said that it does look like it's gonna go down. It did go down already, but again, it's not something we like to touch for now for Euro Pound because we don't have any strong bias. Same as Euro Swiss. Euro Dali on the other hand, we 
still think it's gonna keep going down and that's what happened already uh, Euro Aussie same thing Euro CAD look also looking too short now we do have this bearish engulfing candle today but it's not ideal uh, place for me to short it because if you look at it it's not really in a good position right you are really right at this support right here so I really was hoping it can short at you know 1.4 or at least 1.3550 but we we were not we, we didn't touch those area uh, on the country we are here at this mid range so for me it's a no go just because you know it's too it's not in a significant level for me to get in so that's why although it's it's not a bad signal but it's not in a significant level for me to get in uh your newsy on the other hand it's a nice trade for me and the reason is because yeah it's not ideal but it's much better than eurocad where you are at this uh, 1.48 handle area and you also have enough room to go to the downside so euro new z is the one i'm interested to get in uh euro yen on the other hand not something i want to touch pound swiss also not something i want to touch uh cable is the one i am shorted i do have a pending order which i think i might get filled already so one to 1.25 is the one I got in. Now I got in this one. This is the painting order from last week, basically. It was from that negative retail sale data. And I just keep keep kept that painting order, basically, and got a feel today. And the uh, reason is very simple, you know. I think the bias, fundamentally, is very strong for cable. And I have large enough of stop loss. And I think I'm just keep holding it all the way. This is a very long string trade position that I think uh, my next big catalyst that I was hoping for is the uh, uh, the triggering of Article 50, which I think uh, by the time it's triggered, it's going to cause some sort of panic movement to the downside. So this is the one I'm currently in. Pangazi, as I mentioned already, the one that we moved to break even. Pound cat, I'm also looking to short. I don't have a signal. Same as Pound Newsy. We are at a nice area. We just need a reversal signal. Uh, Pound Yen is not something we do. Same as Swiss French, Japanese Yen, not something I do. Dollar Swiss, already mentioned about it. Dollar Yen, same thing. And Dollar Cat is also not something that I want to buy or sell because they both are quite strong. Aussie Swiss is the one we are in, and Aussie dollar is my intraday trade, which I can show you in an intraday perspective. So Aussie dollar, again, we got in last week at this red candle. Uh, I put a pending order at 76.50 right here. I was hoping to touch basically a 50% Fibonacci level and continue the downside movement. Uh, unfortunately that did not happen we actually breaks out higher and then basically ever since that we are in this kind of range area between 77.32 to 76.18 so I don't know where it's gonna go really we are as I mentioned we are really in this kind of you know triangle and I do hope it's I'm a, the only reason I'm holding it just because the fundamental bias is very strong. But I, there's, there are there are two advantage for me. First is that U.S. dollar still has a better fundamental picture than Australian dollar. Also, that Australian dollar seems to be overbought. Uh, seems to be the currency that is overbought. So it should have some meaningful correction before it. If even if it wants to go up, it should have some meaningful correction, and I know that a lot of traders are waiting for that. So that's the two uh, reasons that's on my side. However, the risk is that the yield is still a favor for Australian. So the, if you look at the bond yield, it's still very favorable for Australian. They still have a higher yield than U.S. Uh, bond and U.S. dollar. They still have a more attractive stance. They are 
more 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 stable politically speaking than U.S. dollar. So that's something you have to be careful because they might keep going up. So I'm not really that convict to this trade. I was really hoping to get out at break even. I just don't really have that today. I do have 76. 40 or 48 the lowest I, I i had an exit at 40 but unfortunately did not reach it i was really hoping it to at least retouch the handle of 76 but it's just it's not happening and really i'm basically stuck in this trade so i don't know what's going to happen i hopefully you know in this next session or two can give me some you know, meaningful retracement for me to get out. Uh, other than that, I will have to manage more closely for this trade. So that's Aussie dollar. And let's take a look at Aussie cat. Aussie cat don't have anything here. It's not something I want to do because both are very strong. See, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar continue to age higher. Now, this is something very peculiar for me as well because I'm actually more bullish about New Zealand dollar. But again, you don't want to go against the, the flow. Another thing about Australian dollar is that only pair, as I mentioned, is really looking to a strong resistance. So unless you are in trades like Aussie Swiss, Aussie Yen, which the fundamental bias is very strong. But if you are in trade like Aussie CAT, we also have a meaningful resistance right here. So Aussie CAD, Aussie, Aussie New Z, or even Aussie dollar could all have some meaningful retracement. So that's what that that's why you have to be careful. Cash Swiss, I'm looking to long, and it does look like we have this nice kangaroo tail here. But again, I don't have. It's not in a nice area for me, right? I don't really have a nice room to go so that's why it's a no go for me Kayang is the one we are in and New Z Swiss New Z Swiss is another one that I, I, I'm interested to get into it and the reason is because we are at this nice 72 handle today with a nice bullish kangaroo tail and the top is still there's still not like nice enough room to go so that's why for me this is a, a good trade but you just have to be careful to put your stop loss low enough so it's really depending on your own risk tolerance if you are in this trade then like if i'm in this trade i really target at 73.50 but i will move my stop loss to break even once i touch this previous high because we are we're not sure how much this resistance can hold New Zealand dollar is not something I will do, uh, same as New Zealand cat. So all these three, if I don't have enough fundamental bias, so you see you have a nice kangaroo tail, but I don't have a fundamental reason to short cat against New Zealand. So that's why I, I'm not going. To, I'm going to overlook it. And New Zealand yen is another thing I really want to buy. Unfortunately, this is not a nice signal. It's an, it's a really good area, but I don't have a, a good enough. Uh, kangaroo tail to show this is not a kangaroo tail this is not a kangaroo tail either so i don't have a signal to get me to it so a lot of people say they don't care they like to long at 81 that's definitely fine if that's what you want to do uh for me it's just you know I, I do like to wait for a signal at least for me to ride the momentum but if you say you don't want it you just want to get on this label that's fine you can do it if that's your strategy so that's pretty much it guys for me for now and uh i will keep monitoring and this week again it's quite a light economic calendar week so not too much catalyst uh watch out for more like a political news that will be the main dr driver if with with the lack of fundamental data okay so uh let me know if this, this video helpful if you have any question you know feel free to ask otherwise i'll be back tomorrow with another daily analysis thanks for watching Bye bye